Just like Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy is one individual connected to the Walt Disney Company that will never admit failure, that will never admit that what they did was wrong when it came to their overall significance and their involvement in a company like Lucasfilm, for example, in this case with the Acolyte series. Now, ever since we saw the finale slash episode 8 of the Acolyte drop on Disney+, Plus, it has been nothing more than a downhill disaster. We all know it, they all know it, they just don't want to admit this because by admitting it, that basically really makes things all the more clear that things really are indeed going to be irreversible damage over at Lucasfilm. It already is in that state, by the way. It has been for a long time now. Even if they started to go in the right path, it would take multiple years to convince the fans that Star Wars is going back in the right direction. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of things going on right now with Kathleen Kennedy and her view of the overall criticism, the reviews, the viewership decline, everything wrong with the Acolyte right now. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, Kathleen Kennedy is no better than those like Leslie Headland and many others associated with Lucasfilm, and the fact is, they are very much extreme when it comes to their overall narrative, when it comes to their overall view of what Star Wars needs to be. Now, we've seen many examples of this with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We saw how Tatiana Maslany was saying all the things that she said about the fans, not liking She-Hulk, not liking the overall direction of the MCU with the Marvels. That's just the beginning of things. However, this is where things get worse. With the Acolyte backlash only getting worse after the finale by Disney and Lucasfilm, one major development happening right now has more to do with Kathleen Kennedy in the wake of the Acolyte backlash and viewership decline. Kennedy recently delivered the following. One of our greatest challenges today in the film industry is dealing with the growing number of cases that include inaccurate criticism for a product, and for especially when that finds its way into fandoms as big as Star Wars. I think that's when you tend to have a more serious issue with determining whether or not a series or a film is, success is successful. In our case, with us here at Lucasfilm, I can't stress this enough, but it is our priority to support diversity, equity, and inclusion at the forefront. It is something that must be taken seriously and you just can't focus on any criticism anymore on social media and or online. The majority of the feedback you get from there tends to be very toxic and negative for all the wrong reasons. And it's the type of conversation that I have had multiple times with Mr. Iger and the concerns that we have here at Lucasfilm. It's the one major thing that we agreed on, along with our support for the LGBTQ plus community and how we will continue to incorporate that into the multiple Star Wars films and television programs that we have in the works right now, some of which are moving past the early development phase that will continue to support the many communities that need to be addressed. In our case with The Acolyte, I just think that the reviews and the criticism that you see online and across all forms of social media cannot be trusted, and it's one thing that we are taking into account here at Lucasfilm. It's part of their narrative to convince others to think the way that they think that we here at Lucasfilm and Disney hold some form of an agenda when this is completely false and not true. It's something that Bob Iger likes to point out multiple times to really make that clear, and I, and I am still so very proud of what Leslie put out there with the Acolyte. It was time to move on from what is thought to be the norm from George's perspective of how we could bend the view of what Star Wars needs to be for attracting new fans. I think we are getting a head start with that move. Our support for women and female roles have never been better and we will continue to make that our priority as well for the many films that we have in the works right now. So guys, before I move on about what Kathleen Kennedy is really just throwing out there again, it is nothing more than what Leslie Headland has done, nothing different I should say than what Leslie Headland has actually thrown out there. Interestingly enough, she's saying that there's no agenda at Lucasfilm but at the same exact time, she's literally admitting an agenda. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is an agenda if you are providing it above proper storytelling and proper character development. That's the key thing that I think you all have to hear from me right now. It is an agenda in and of itself if it is being treated as the priority over storytelling, over character development, over 
creating entertainment. All right. So that's the main reason why a lot of industry, uh, you know, out there, a lot of industries, I should say, out there, including the film industry, suffer because a lot of it has to do with DEI and using that as a priority above what you really should be focusing on. Now, look, diversity and all that should come naturally in the process. It should be very organic, right? That's when it works best. And that's what I like to always make very clear to you guys. Now, what's interesting about this, though, is that she keeps on claiming that you can't trust criticism online. You can't trust reviews on social media. Of course, she's alluding to Rotten Tomatoes and the terrible critic score, or the audience score, I should say, on Rotten Tomatoes, right? So, that's obvious. But moving on, she goes on to conclude... When I first came to Lucasfilm, this was something that I knew was going to be an ongoing struggle, especially with how there are many that remain opposed to female-led roles and our support for the many communities that we need to address. And everything truly, I think, started with the Acolyte. Never have we done something to support like that before for women, for LGBTQ, and especially for how we establish diversity, equity, and inclusion, and all the like in a well-balanced manner to attract a wider, more global audience. This should not be confused with any kind of an agenda. Well, Kathleen Kennedy, let me just say one thing to you. The fact that you claim that there's no agenda in Star Wars, yet you hire somebody like Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, who literally just admitted that in episode 8, the reason why the main character, Soul, was destroyed, was killed off by the hands of OSHA, played by Amanda Stenberg, is because of benign sexism. That's literally what Leslie Headland admitted. Why Soul met his demise is because he was actually radiating benign sexism to the character OSHA and May. That is literally something that Leslie Headland admitted, guys. It is ludicrous. It is out of this world crazy. And never did I believe a couple of years ago that I would be standing here today that this is where Star Wars would be at. And believe me, it's about to get even worse in the next couple of years. Just you wait for 2026. We'll talk more about that in the next couple of days. But interestingly enough, again, Kathleen Kennedy really going off against the fans, against the criticism, against especially how there are so many that really just want nothing to do with Star Wars anymore, and rightfully so. You know, I have moved on from supporting Star Wars in a positive sense, guys. I no longer back it up. I no longer support for what it is. You know, it took a lot of, you know, convincing. You know, I thought that maybe there would be a rebound, maybe there would be a turnaround down the line. It is ultimately clear now that there is no turnaround. And we all saw this coming two, two and a half years ago, that they were doubling down on their agenda. So I would like to hear what everyone has to say about Kathleen Kennedy, about Leslie Headland, about the Acolyte in total, and the aftermath. Believe me, it's not lightening up too easily. So I would like to hear what you all have to say about that below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. <laughs>